Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I am teaching you a lesson on light and shadow in your illustrations, landscapes, and even loose florals. So let's jump right in and get started. Okay, so today we are going to be doing a lesson on light and shadow and how to incorporate it into your paintings to give them a little bit more of a realistic feel, even if they're not realistic paintings. Okay, so adding shadow can really make your pieces pop, even if they're just illustrations. They prevent them from looking less flat, and they overall just look a lot better, in my opinion. So... My first lesson is up here with our little mugs. This is for like little illustrations. The first thing you want to do is figure out where your light is coming from. Even if you didn't paint a sun in your picture, you want to visualize where the light is coming from. If you guys refer back to my illustration of my desk from a couple weeks ago, you'll notice that I added some shadows and I had an idea of where the light would have come from to hit each item of where to place the shadows. So like I said, you don't have to add a sun in your picture. You just kind of want to pick a spot so you know where, and it just got really dark in my office, um, <laughs> where the light is coming from so you can properly place your shadows. Let me fix my lighting in my office. Okay, so first let's start off with these cups and I drew an illustration of a sun to give you an example. So I have three cups and the light is hitting them all differently. So what I want you to visualize is where your sun or your light is coming from, your light source, and you're gonna imagine this line and it's gonna hit your object. So if the sun is right here, it's gonna hit the object here, making the shadow go right where that line is. Okay, and that's where you're gonna place your shadow. Some people ask, what color should I paint my shadow? I typically just paint it gray, so a light wash of gray, um, but I'll show you later. Depending on where the object is sitting, it will be different. If it's sitting on a white desk, like my desk right now, you can see there's shadow here, there's shadow from my paintbrush, it's kind of gray. When we get to our landscapes, it's a little bit different, um, and I'll show you, but for this sake, we're just gonna do gray, so I'm just gonna grab a light wash of my black, that my blue, okay? And I'm gonna water it down. And remember, our sun is hitting here, so we are going to place the shadow underneath our cup like it's sitting on a desk. Okay, I'm gonna take some of that pigment off and I'm just gonna place the shadow over here, like that. It doesn't have to be the exact same shape of the cup. Um, it can just be kind of like a blob if you want to do the shape of the cuff if the cup It's like a really harsh shadow you can or you can just wash off your brush Dry it a bit and then just blend it out. So it kind of blends into the paper Okay, and typically I'll go right back in and Just add a bit more darkness right underneath the cup. I'm just gonna blend that out a bit because it's a little harsh I'm just going to continue taking off the pigment, washing and drying off my brush and just blend it out. Okay. And there is the shadow for that cup. Now here, the sun is facing right down, so you're going to get the shadow this way. Now, depending if the sun or the light source is right above it, it's going to make a difference on how long or short the shadow is going to be. If it's hitting it more on an angle like this, um, where it's like kind of coming at it, you'll have a longer shadow. And if it's like right over top, you're gonna have a shorter shadow. So it's really up to you and your um, creativity of how you wanna do it. And again, it's almost easier if you are painting from an actual photo, just because then you can actually just look at the real shadow. But depending on how you wanna do it, I'm just gonna blend it out and then add that darker bit. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Um, it's gonna make a difference in how you're your picture looks. Okay, just washing off my brush and drying it just to blend this out a bit more, like that. Okay, so there's our shadow underneath there. You can always add, you know, deeper color just to make it a little bit darker. And then lastly, over here. Okay, again, just kind of following that line. It's gonna hit over this way. 
blend it out a bit. Grab a bit more color. And just deepen it over here. Now, this makes our cups pop out, right? They look a little bit more 3D. These shadows look a lot lighter on camera than they do in person. <laughs> I might have to deepen them just so you guys can see a bit better. And if you're doing it on dry, you can just place the shadow there and then just blend it out a bit. Um, it makes it pop out a bit more, but that's not the only shadow you can add to your paintings. Let me just dry this really quickly and then we'll continue. I'm actually just deepening these shadows a bit more. I found them too light on camera. So I'm just going over with a bit more, a bit more pigment. Just blending it out. Okay, now that that's dry, I can continue. Okay, so like I was saying, that's not the only shadow you can add to your illustrations. So what you can also add is the shading on the actual object, so the cup. So again, looking at where the light is hitting, you're gonna have the lightest part of your cup over here and the shadow over here. But how do we create shadow on our actual color of our object? So a little quick tip to create a shadow color of a certain color like pink or red, you can use its complementary or contrasting color. So if you look at the color wheel, do I have a color wheel? I don't, but I have so many videos on this, you could always refer back to that. Um, pink and red's contrasting color is green. So if you add a tad bit of green to your pink, you can make a darker um, pink that will look like the shadow. So I'm just going to take my permanent rose, which is what I used for this cup, and I'm going to add its contrasting color, which is green. I'm just going to add some hooker's green just a little bit. You don't want it half and half. Half and half of the mixture makes brown like this. Um, you want more pink than you do green. It's just going to darken the pink. And you're going to apply the shadow to where the sun would not be hitting it. So on this side of the cup. Okay, so I'm just going to place our shadow here like that. I'm going to wash off my brush, blend it out a bit. Okay, wash off my brush, blend it out so I don't have this like harsh line. I'm going to go back in with a bit more. Okay, and this is going to be darker. Same with the handle. The handle, because it's on this side of the cup, on this drawing, it's going to be darker. Now, inside here, the cup, this is a little tricky. Okay, let's see if I can actually... Hmm. It's, it's hard to explain. Okay, so right now, looking at my mug here, my light source is right here, also right here. But let's look at it here. The sun is hitting here, the sun, the light is hitting here. So you're going to get a little bit of lightness, of light hitting the inside of this cup and darkness on this side. Even though the light is hitting this side of the cup, this is casting a shadow, right? but it's hitting the upper part here. So I hope this makes sense. So the sun, right, would be hitting right over this edge of the cup. I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna blend it out a bit more. It's a little dark. Um, it would be hitting this side. It would miss the lip of this part, okay? So there would be a shadow in here. Okay, because this side of the cup is blocking it. And then it would slowly blend out this way and it would actually be hitting the light inside this part of the cup if that makes sense does that make sense i hope that makes sense okay so now let's try with this one here it's hitting this way now again like i said it depends if it's hitting right down or if it's kind of on an angle let's do let's do like it's i don't know let's we're gonna shade inside because i think it's gonna be hitting more on an angle Okay, so I'm just going to darken inside a bit because it would kind of darken. We're only seeing the back of the cup here, so it would darken all over here. 
and then it would be the darkest down at the bottom. It would still be a little bit dark here because the sun's kind of coming from behind, but we want it even deeper towards the bottom. So you know what, I'm just gonna wet the whole thing. <laughs> If that helps, I'm going to grab a bit more color. And I'm just going to start deepening at the base here. And then right around the top here. Okay. It's going to blend it out. Okay. And then over here, you would probably get a little bit of light hitting the top of the, there, but then right underneath the handle, you'd get some darkness. Like that, okay? I feel like this needs to be blended out just a bit better. Okay. And then finally, this one, same thing as this, but we're just going that way. Again, I just need to add a bit more color. Okay, again, our shadow is on this side of the cup. I'm just gonna add our shadow there, wash it off, dry it, blend it out. Okay. And then over here, the sun would be hitting the inside of that part, but there would be a shadow right here. And then with this handle, since it's still on that side, it's gonna have a different shadow than this one because the sun is actually hitting it. So the sun would actually be just hitting the bottom inside here where it kind of folds over. And that's about it. And that already makes our illustrations look a bit more 3D. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, so now let's move on to our scenery. So our landscapes. So here I've <laughs> I've done two different landscape <laughs> landscapes. Um, they're very very uh, simple. I'll just say simple, um, but we have our light source here. Okay, so I drew a little sun um, and we have our light source here. So now a tree, if we wanna add more dimension, like these both look super flat, right? In order to elevate this simple illustration, adding shadow can do wonders for it. So even to the trees, we have a flat color here. We're gonna add some shadow. Typically I do this when it's wet, but I just wanted to already have it ready um, for the, the painting. Um, so I'm just going to go over it again, just to kind of show you, I'm just going to kind of wet it up just so I can show you what I'm doing. Okay. So we have our lightest wash. I always start with the lightest wash for my trees. Then I'm going to go in with a medium wash. So just a darker version of whatever color that is. So again, our light source is coming here. It's going to be hitting and we're going to put the shadow on the opposite side of where it'd be hitting. So it'd be hitting down here. Now, you know, some trees, some trees, all trees have parts that are sticking out that are a bit more um, pronounced than others. So maybe there's a part that would be sticking out here. So we're going to have a little bit of shadow right there. I like to go kind of like in and in like that, like that. So we have our first layer here. So our mid tone. And then I like to add a third shadow, which is darker. So I'm going to add a darker green. just to make it look a bit more 3D. Okay, and I'm just doing little taps like this. And see that already adds so much more dimension. Okay, let's try with our yellowy green tree. I'm just gonna add a bit more yellow here. Let's wet it up. Okay. Sometimes even like to the green, this green tree, I'll add a little bit more yellow here where it would be hitting the sun, okay? Okay, so then I'm gonna add my medium green. I can mix a bit more green with my yellow. And again, we're tapping, it's gonna be hitting over here. Maybe a bit more in there, like so. And then our final color, I'll just do a darker green like so. And that already took our illustration 
to the next level. Okay, now that's not the only part you're going to do. You need shadow from the sun kind of casting it on the tree and then the tree casting the shadow on the ground. So we're going to do a shadow underneath as well. Again, imagine that line. I'm just going to add a darker green. Um, if you don't have a darker green, like I said before, to add a shadow color, you just add its um, contrasting or complementary color. So again, pink and red. Uh, their contrasting color is green, so if we're doing green here, if you don't have a different green other than these like medium greens, you can always just add a little bit of red, but I have a darker green, so I'm just going to use that. So I'm going to just start with my green here, and I'm just going to, again, depending on how high the sun is, it can, if it's right above, it's going to cast this like really short shadow. If it's like midday, it's going to cast a longer shadow. This one is more above, so it's going to be a smaller shadow right under that tree. Now that's a little, a little sharp, so I'm just blending it out a bit. And it's going to be darkest right underneath. Okay, so I'm just adding a bit more dark color, and I'm just going to tap it in right there. Like so. Okay? Same with this one. Again, if you want to blend out your shadows, just wash off your brush. like that, just so you can blend it out. Okay, again, let's do this one. This one is a bit more over, so the sun would be hitting it this way. Okay, so this one might be a little bit further out. Wash your brush off. My son is throwing a tantrum downstairs. <laughs> what else is new? Okay, grab your darker green again. Oops and right underneath on that side, okay? And already that makes a huge difference. Okay, and then lastly, we did it on the, the branch, or no, we did it on the grass, we did it on the leaves, now for the branches, okay? I'm just gonna take my smaller brush here and our tree trunk is brown. I'm going to grab either a darker brown or just slightly more pigmented brown of what I was using. And again, we're just going to hit that side, okay, of the tree. Now, the sun is not really hitting this. It, again, it's over top. So most of this would be dark. So I'm just going to blend this out. And it's mostly at the top because the leaves and everything would be casting the shadow. So I'm going to kind of have it darker towards the top. And you might get a little bit of light down here. Okay, but look already how it changed that illustration, right? Okay, so now here I have this one, which is a bear tree. Um, there's no leaves, so how are we gonna do that? We are just gonna do the branches. So I'm gonna take my brown, and I'm just going to, we're using the same sun, we're gonna put the shadow on the opposite side of where the sun would be hitting, so on this side of the tree. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda go along every branch, like so. You can even use a darker one if you'd like, a darker brown. Now this kinda looks still a little flat, like there's shadow, but they're, they're just lines, right? So you might want to blend it out, just I'm washing and drying off my brush, and blend out that shadow a bit more. That's too much. <laughs> okay, just so you're not getting these like super sharp lines. I grab my darker brown again and just do another round. Like so, like that. And then, now because the sun is hitting the snow, okay, that's gonna change the color of the shadow. So if you're working on a white surface, you can do a gray shadow, but sometimes what I really like to do, depending on the, the time of day, like this looks like mid-noon, so it might not 
be um, necessarily just gray mid-noon. Does that make sense? I don't know. Um, I'm actually going to make it a bluish shadow. And if it's like later in the day, it's almost like this bluish purple shadow. So I'm going to do that. And because, again, the sun is hitting this way, it's, the shadow is going to go more to the side than it did here. This one was hitting right down, so the shadow was right underneath. This is hitting that way. And because, say, it's like later in the day, we're going to have the shadow going out a lot longer. So I'm going to use some cobalt blue and maybe a bit of permanent rose to get like this lavender kind of shadow color. And we're just going to follow the trees like this. And it also just adds a really nice look to our illustration. So they're going to be nice long shadows and then you can do a little bit of the branches if you like you don't have to do too much detail if you don't want to it could be like fading out a bit as it gets a bit further but then I'm going to go back in with a bit more color and just tap right where it would be hitting. See that? See how that kind of changed it? It gets a little bit lighter as it goes out because you get a little bit more light hitting the shadow, but right behind where that that branch or that trunk is hitting the shadow is going to be the darkest. And just adding that gradient of a really dark shadow to kind of like a little bit lighter is going to make it pop. Okay? And again, if it's you find it's kind of getting a bit sharp there, you can just blend it out a bit. like that. If you want to go back in, add a bit more deeper bits to it. There you go. Okay. And there is your shadow for your tree on snow. Okay. So we did it for little illustrations of objects. We did it for our landscapes. And now I'm going to talk about my loose florals because they are so loose. Um, but there is a way to add shadows to make them look a bit more three-dimensional, even though they're super loose. Okay, so I always start off with a light wash. So I'm just going to grab this, like, peachy color here. I always start off with a light wash. And let's say, let's do a rose just for fun. Now, a rose is made up of tightly wound petals that all kind of meet in the middle, right? And the tighter the petals that are the less sun gets in, right? So there's going to be more darkness towards the center of the rose than there are on these outer petals, which are touching a bit more of the light. So always when I'm doing a rose, I'll start with my light wash, make it fairly wet. I'll go back in to my color, make it darker, and I will hit it with a darker pigment to make it have a bit more shadow in the center. That's why I do that, okay? You can even drag some of these lines out if you like, but I always make it darker in the center because it makes it look a bit more 3D. Okay, let's just add a little bit of green just to make it darker. That's a bit too brown, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, it's gonna make it darker. And it's going to give it that 3D kind of shadowy vibe without it being looking realistic, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's for a rose. Um, for something that's like an anemone. So let's do, again, like a pinkish color. Okay, we have our light petal there, petal there, petal there. And here I didn't really think too much about the light source. I was just thinking that the tighter those petals were, the less light would get into it, and that's where it would be darker. Um, for this one, same thing. The petals are t tightly together here, so you're going to get a lot less shadow, right, or a, a lot less light hitting in the center. So I always make my um, bleh, flowers <laughs> have a darker shadow towards the center. Let's grab a little bit of green, more pink, like that. And I'll just drag it into the center like this. Okay, and it gives it a little bit of shadow. Um, and this is for our light, or, or light, our loose paintings. 
Okay, I might add a little bit of shadow, like right here there's a dip. Sometimes if flowers, let me see if I have one. If petals have dips and stuff like that, so right where there's creases, you'll get some more um, shadows there. So you can always add these lines, like they're little bits of shadows, like there's a bit of a dip. Okay, and even though we're loose and we're not doing something that's super detailed, adding those little bits of shadows will help make it look a bit more 3D, if that makes sense, okay? And then if we wanted to add our leaves, so let's just grab any green we have here. Okay, so we have a leaf here, like that. Now, the actual flower would be casting a bit of a shower, shower. I can't speak today, shadow on the leaves, but right where it is close to it. You'd be getting a little bit more light towards the edge of the leaf, so you could always add a bit more yellow if you wanted to to make it a little bit lighter. But then right where it kind of hits the flower, I would make it darker. So it's like, oops, it's still loose, but you know what I mean, <laughs> okay? Um, that's where you'd get a bit more shadow, if that makes sense. Loose, but it still, still makes sense, okay? This is not the greatest example. I'm going fast and does not look good, but I always add a shadow right kind of at the base. And this goes for our detailed flowers too, obviously. Um, I can do a separate video if you guys are interested on how to add accurate-ish shadows to detailed flowers, but that's kind of it for this video. So I hope our lesson on light and shadow was helpful um, for like little illustrations, landscapes, and loose florals and if you guys want any more information on different subjects let me know in the comments below and that's about it thank you guys so much for watching my video i really hope you liked it and i hope you learned something don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on instagram for even more have a great day guys bye